Hello everyone, we are back. We are back with another episode of Golf Cart Garage. I am Tim. I, we are live right now in Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I made it through the eclipse. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's all I can say. I've never seen anything like that. That it was, it was really cool. That's all I can say. I mean, we went dark. I mean, I've, I've said it before that I'm in the totality zone. So we literally went dark for about four to five minutes in the middle of the afternoon. And then it was, I don't know, it was, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm, I'm glad I was, I, we went out on the lake. I viewed it from out on the lake. So yeah, it was cool. Oh, uh, where are we at over here? Let me check Facebook and make sure we're good. Yep, we're good. John Shear first. Whoop, whoop, John. Is that from Insane Clown Posse, John? <laughs> uh, William Rizzo. Hello, Tim, from the villages of uh, Florida. It's Kirk, how was the eclipse? It was awesome, Kirk. It was really awesome. Sir Walter, hello. From North Carolina, missed that weak Wi-Fi problem. Yeah, that was crazy last week. I'm, it's not windy here today, so we should be okay. Helpless, what's going on, Helpless? Every, uh, greetings from Cabot. Cloudy and 59 degrees. The eclipse was spectacular. It was. It was. It was really cool. Uh, William Rizzo, 80 this morning. 63 and overcast in southwestern Indiana. Mike Irwin. Nice weather in Michigan. Headed out to MTB trials later today. Nate Mellon. Good afternoon, Tim. I'm getting my motor and stuff from Plum Quick. Will the 36 volt Cobra work for my needs? If that 36 volt Cobra, I don't stay up with every one of their different motors, Nate. But if that 36 volt Cobra, if you talk to them about the fact that you needed a torque application, you needed to pull little trailers and everything, then yeah, they 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 make a good product. They 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 can hook you up. Keith from Nashville, cool and rainy, 64, rainy and 54 in Bristol, from. Uh, Greg Elliott, what's going on, Greg? Easy Mike to use, 77 and sunny in South Georgia. Howdy, folks. Bruce, hello from West Pool, Wisconsin. Rock Dog, what's going on, Rock? 60% here in the villages. Man, we had 100. It was it was really neat. Jeffrey, hey, Tim, 68 in Poconos. Rock Dog, overcast and drizzle in Athens. Joe Foster, 56 and rainy, North Carolina. Don't have anybody on Facebook yet. Making a comment, just making sure everything's running. Looks like we're running good. Yeah, we were watching. Uh, we were watching the eclipse, you know, as it was happening, because we had the glasses and everything, and we even had a little filter that you put over your smartphone lens, and then you could take pictures. And I got, I got a couple of pictures. I'll show you what, in case you haven't seen them. I mean, all the total. All the totality pictures I've seen look exactly like mine, so it's not really that big a deal. I'm sure you've seen what it looks like, but I took some from, from my location too. But uh, as the moon was going in front, you know, and the sun was getting less and less and getting closer and closer to totality, it was still daylight outside. I mean, we were watching it, you know, 25%, 50%, 75%, and I, we all kept saying, man, it ought to be getting darker, I would think. 80%, 90%, it's still daylight outside. Well, there, apparently there's a big difference between 90% totality and 100 because when it went to 100, the lights went out. I mean, just that little sliver of sun was lighting up everything, you know, but once that went out, the lights went out. It was really strange. Let me mute this phone. Hundred miles out of the eclipse. What's up, everyone? Big Mike, what's going on? Sunny in seventies in Peoria, Arizona. Ron Bunch, what's up, Ron? Now we got people showing in on Facebook. Harry Fike, what's going on, Harry? Partly cloudy, eighty-four in Salfo Springs, Florida. Larry Hits, what's going on, Larry? Tim Keck. Clouds and 51 here in North Alabama. What's going on, Tim Keck? Bart Gilman, 61, Northern California, clear skies. Cool. Uh, we did have a temperature change, Kirk. It went from about 70 something to 60 something in about, it, about a 10 degree change in just a matter of minutes. And then as soon as it you know started passing and the lights started coming back on, 
it warmed back up again. I think we ended up getting up to about 80 yesterday where we were at. So yeah, it was, it was really strange. But I'm glad, I saw, I'm glad I got to see that though. It makes you understand how insignificant we are in the universe when you see something spectacular like that and you think about the, the planets aligning and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jeffrey, my dog slept through it. They did not even look at it. They, they had been playing all day on the beach and uh, they were both just worn out, so they just kind of slept through it. I don't even think they knew that it got dark. <laughs> Mark Rayner, what's going on, Mark Rayner? Fanning Springs, State Park, Florida, 85 today. Awesome, awesome. Sherry King on Facebook. Good afternoon, Tim. Cloudy, 68 in Charleston, West Virginia. Hello, Sherry King. All right, I guess we should get started with the regular questions. Like I said, I have a couple of pictures I'll show later uh, in this episode. This is Tuesday the 9th. If you're watching us on Tuesday the 9th, then at 12 noon Central Time, then you're watching us live right now. Uh, this is actually episode 195, believe it or not. We are, we are closing in on the 200th episode. If you'd like to follow us on any other platform besides Facebook and YouTube, please follow us on either Facebook and YouTube. Give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. But here's the links to the other social media platforms that we are involved in. Gary England. What's going on, Gary? Uh, do you spook Vanning? I'll probably go dark for the next one. Ricky Smith. Hey, Tim. Are all the easy go lug nut patterns the same for the marathon to be TX? Yes, Ricky. The only, the easy go lug nut patterns, club car lug nut patterns, if they're all four lug nuts, you know, four hole, then they're all the same pattern. The only thing you have to worry about is the Yamaha lug nuts. Yamaha, the, the pattern's the same, but you can't swap lug nuts from a Yamaha on a, to an easy go or a club car. They have to stay with the Yamaha because it's a metric, uh, metric thread on the bolts on the Yamaha on the lug nuts. That's the only thing you have to worry about. But the rims are all interchanged between all three of the brands, as long as they're all four lug. Now, there are some more heavy duty utility vehicles in club car line and Yamaha line and easy go line that might have a five lug rim. Uh, but that's gonna be a special occasion or a special application vehicle, like an airport shuttle or something that carries a whole bunch of weight. But yeah, they're, they're all the same, except for the Yamaha lug nuts themselves. Okay, we'll start off with question one today, regular scheduled questions. This is from Mike. I recently bought a used 96 Club Car DS. It has heavy duty springs in rear with rear seat. I notice on both sides the brake cable, brake cables rub inside of both rear tires. What causes this and what is the fix? Thank you. Well, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, something must not have been manufactured exactly correct to, in order for that to be the case. They, they didn't take that under consideration. But the, the easiest fix to that would probably be just to get a one inch wheel spacer. You know, they make wheel spacers for golf carts and the smallest I've ever seen, I think is one inch. I don't know if you can get half inch or not, but I'd put a one inch wheel spacer on that rim and get it away from that cable because I wouldn't want it rubbing for sure. But it must be a fault with the lift kit itself or, or it, probably the lift kit because they may have had to, uh, the design of the lift kit, a lot of times they have to relocate the brake cable. It might not have been in exactly the right place. Ricky Smith, what's up? Oh, yeah. I think you're welcome, Ricky. Number two from Kenneth. I bought a six inch A arm lift kit and installed it. The cart works fine on the road. But as soon as I hit a dirt road, it goes out of control. Any suggestions on where I should check? Well, it's, it's just one of them things. We've talked about that a lot in here. There's a couple of things that, you know, are you, I, I say that uh, this is your enemy when it comes to this. Like on an electric car, I say heat is your enemy. On an, any electrical system, heat is your enemy. Or excessive heat is your enemy. Well, on an application like what you're talking about, slack is your enemy. 
So you got to figure out where you have some slack because if you didn't have slack, that very unlikely that would happen if you didn't have slack somewhere. So you're going to have to raise the front end up and move some things around. You might have to get somebody to sit in the cart and turn the steering wheel while you try to hold pressure on something. You're going to have to figure out where you're where you have some slack. It could be in a number of different places. Okay, number three. This is from Melissa. Does the key need to be in the off position to charge the golf cart or can it be in the forward position? In the forward position. If, you're, if your cart has a forward position, you didn't say own position, you said forward. So that makes me think you're talking about an RXV or something. I don't see why that wouldn't work, but I know there's some people in the room that have RXVs. Tell me if you can charge an RXV with the key in forward. Uh, just because I think that must be what she's talking about. It, she must have an RXV because she didn't say the key in the off position or the on position. She said off and forward position. So tell me about an RXV. Can you charge an RXV with it in forward? I mean, I, I don't want to speak out of turn there because I'm, I've never... I don't know. I don't 100% know on the answer to that one. So, I'm, but I know where are you at, Rock Dog? Don't you have an RXV? Or somebody does. But on on the cars that aren't an RXV, I can tell you this: it doesn't matter where you got the key, on, off. It doesn't matter. You can charge the the cart just like normal. It's a completely separate circuit. Larry Consley. What's going on, Larry? Hello, everyone. Number four. This is from Dirk. I put a lift kit on my Yamaha Drive 2010, and it's squirrely when you hit a bump or dip in the road. Hard to control. What do I need? Replace shocks on the front and back. Okay, your 2010 drive. Yeah, we talked about that too, you know, because Yamahas, they don't have springs in the rear. They've got the, the coilovers. So, oh, Dave just posted. I forgot we had an RXV in the, in the warehouse. Dave just posted, said that we left the RXV in forward one night and it charged just fine. Okay, so apparently it doesn't matter in, in an RXV either. I knew it didn't matter on all other cars, but the fact that she said forward position kind of made me think she might be talking about an RXV. <laughs> he says, but I watched the Eclipse because I thought the Path of Totality was a new Metallica song. That is a good title for a song. Since the battery, uh, Rock Dog, yeah, he says he does have an RXV. He was able to charge with the key in any position, I believe. Since the battery changed, it definitely doesn't matter. Okay, that, that's what I thought. I just didn't want to speak out of turn on that. So thank you guys for checking on that. Uh, hopefully, Melissa will be watching this video and she will get the answer to her question there. That it does not matter. To the solenoid without moving the center two batteries. I'm going to have to replace the positive cable from the solenoid to the batteries on my 2015 Club Car 48. Can I get to the solenoid without removing the center two batteries? Helpless. This is what I always say about stuff like that. It's so important to not drop a wrench. It's so important to not touch a wrench into the wrong place. It's so important not to wear metal jewelry. All of these things are very important. So that, to me, what I always looked at is situations like that, if it's that important for me not to do something wrong, I want plenty of room. So I would remove the batteries to get to it if, if that would help you have plenty of room and help you be able to move around. I do not like working in a bind. You know what I'm telling you? So I don't know if you could actually get to them without moving the, uh, get to the solenoid without removing the batteries. But I'm telling you what I would probably do. I probably would remove them just to make it easy. And thank you, by the way, Helpless, for sending me a Facebook request. 
I had to figure out who you were before I accepted it. Big Mike says he welded my golf cart messing around wiring lights once. Don't be touching stuff. Yep, that's what I'm saying. It's very, very important. Some of those things that I mentioned are very important. To, or you can weld yourself to the side of your golf cart, you know, just by, you know, if you're not paying attention. Let me check on Facebook. Larry La Cucaracha, what's up, Larry? I'm here. Sorry I'm late. No problem, man. Kevin Sawyer, good afternoon. Coming in late today. 67 and sunny in Couch, Indiana. Thank you for showing up, Kevin. Take pictures first before removing anything. Yep, exactly. It's a, very important to take pictures also. Greg Elliott says, I haul cart on an enclosed hauler, single axle, 12 by 65, China bomb tires, and I want to remove ASFP. Any suggestions for safer tires? You're talking about, let's see, a haul cart on an enclosed hauler, single axle. You talking about any suggestions for trailer tires? No jewelry unless you want to get a nasty burn. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm talking about. That's why this is a rubber uh, it's a rubber ring on this finger. You can get more expensive trailer tires if that's what you're talking about uh, than you know than cheap you know like you said China bomb tires. Just don't get them from tractor supply. You can go to a regular tire place because on one of my trailers, I just went to a regular tire place and they have trailer tires there too. And you don't have to get the real cheap ones. Uh, in fact, my RV has Goodyear's on it. And then I think my Big Tex trailer, I've got a five by 10 Big Tex. I think it's got a, it might have Bridgestones on it even. But I mean, those are definitely highway ready. So you don't have to get China Bomb tires. I would, I would get, in fact, if you're gonna be hauling it a lot on the highway and stuff, it'd probably be a good idea not to. But I understand, you know, you're wanting to do that, but you get what you pay for. Uh, Dave, if you're listening, Big Mike's asking about that uh, confirmation email or something on the leaf springs he returned. I used the positive probe on a voltmeter as a welding rod once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that can happen. That can happen accidentally. You can use LT tires on a trailer also. I think you, I guess you mean a light truck. Is that what you mean, helpless there? Is that LT, is that light truck tires? Or is that, yeah, that must be what that is. Jackson, Amador County. Hey, hey, Tina, my name's Tim. <laughs> you typed in Jim, but you received your hat. Okay, I was, I was, I was glad you showed up because uh, Dave had sent me a tracking number and I was gonna give it to you if you, if you hadn't got it yet. But uh, I'm glad you got it. That's Tina Wilson, the last winner of our bag of swag is on Facebook. Yep, she finally got her gift. It had a, it had a, uh, it got damaged en route and so it got returned so it was a delay in her getting it, but we sent her out another one as soon as uh, Dave, Dave in the warehouse sent her out another one as soon as, he, uh, as soon as he got it back. So I'm glad you got it. Thank you for letting me know, Tina. Now I don't have to answer your email that I, that I just saw before I went live. I just checked and I saw that you had asked me that question. So I'm glad you showed up today. It says thanks and help us says yes on the light truck tires. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it said if you're gonna use a trailer a lot on the highway, especially at speed, I mean I've had trailers go out before. I've had jet ski trailer blow up a tire, uh, you know, and it was those cheap tires. So I get your concern, that's for sure. Let's see, that was number four. Did we did I finish number four? It was about that Yamaha situation. 
It's squirrely when you hit a bumper, hard to control. What do I need to replace? Replace the shocks on front and back. Well, I guess my question would be, did you go with heavy duty springs on the rear? Because you can take those coilovers off and you can put heavy duty set on there. Jake's makes a heavy duty set for Yamaha's, or you can buy the whole shock, but if you just put it back with a stock shock, then you're, you're still gonna have the issue. So you definitely need heavy duty on the rear if you didn't do that. Big Mike says, Kevin and I just went and bought my new to me cart hauling trailer, five by eight, fits the cart perfectly. If I back the tailboard over the rail, okay, cool. So the tailboard will go over if you back it in. See, mine's a five by 10. I, I, five by eight does work and, it, and it, it should work fine. But when you got that four passenger kit, you know, that eight foot does come into play there. You gotta, if it's lifted, you know, and it goes over the top, then everything's fine. Craig, what's going on? Craig, thank you for showing up, man. Been busy, but made it. Well, we are still here. We are still here, Craig. We are still rocking and rolling. I did not get abducted by aliens uh, during the eclipse. Uh, it was looking kind of weird outside, but I did not get abducted. I can still see my retinas are not burned out. From looking through my cheap glasses at it. Okay, number five. This is from Franklin. If I have a 36 volt system, couldn't I hook up the lights direct to two batteries and not use the voltage reducer? Absolutely, Franklin. Absolutely, you can do that. You can do that. That's been done over the years uh, millions of times. Yeah. People that have a 36 volt system, if they have uh, Six, six volt batteries, or even if they have three twelves, you know, a lot of people still love to try to run those three twelves. They think they're getting away with it, think they're getting away with something cheaper, but they really aren't in the long run. They're not getting away with something cheap. But six sixes, yeah, you can go across two batteries. That is a big, the two sixes in series, that is a big 12 volt battery. So lights would have, you'd have to run your lights all the time in order to really put a big hurting on, the, on that 12 volt battery. Because those two sixes, that's uh, they're over 60 pounds a piece. So you're looking at over 120 pound 12 volt battery when you hook them right there. So it's very, very little. It's, it's, not, it's not gonna be able to draw those down very easily. You'd have to really mess up and leave them on for a long period of time. So yeah, you, absolutely you can do that. Julio Melendez, what's going on, Julio? Purchased a 2017 club car. Going downhill without pressing gas pedal, engine makes a squealing sound. Is it the clutch or brakes trying to slow down? Going downhill, okay, this is a gas 2017 club car. Makes a squealing sound. Usually, Julio, a squealing sound has something to do with a belt, usually. So what I would do is if you have an extra belt, even if you have one that's worn out, change, you know, it's really easy to change a drive belt on a, on a, on a golf cart. Change that drive belt out and see if that, if that was, it makes any difference whatsoever. If not, it's going to most likely be one of your clutches if you're not touching the brake pedal when it happens. You know, the, normally if, this, if it's just something to do with brakes, then it wouldn't occur until you're touching the brake pedal. So if it's occurring without you touching the brake pedal, I would be looking at belts first and then clutches second. Craig said he did get abducted. <laughs> you're still tingling from the probing that went on, Craig? Helpless says, during the eclipse, our chickens were looking all confused when it went dark. I've heard stories like that, that, uh, some, that uh, somebody was telling me about the frogs and the crickets started chirping when it went dark at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, like normally they would do in the evening time. But it didn't happen where I was at, but it, I heard some people saying it did happen where they were. Jeffrey says he'll send some pictures of his service trailer. That's good. I, I'll show them, Jeffrey. Yeah, that's good. I like seeing anything like that. That'll, that'll be a good picture. 108 
inches by 18 enclosed. He has every tool for welders, compressors in it for service calls. Yeah, we'd like to see that. I'd like to see your service trailer. Tina saw the eclipse too. She says it was amazing. Were you in the total? Uh, were you in the path of totality, Tina? I I was in the totality path here where I'm at, and it went dark. Number six. Big Mike, you still listening? Dave just posted about your question there. <clears throat> okay. Number six is where I'm at, regular questions. From Michelle, I have an easy go gas cart. I'm looking for more low end torque. I saw some upgraded clutch springs. Would that be a good solution? Uh, yes, that's, that's really about your only solution is to, to do some clutch tuning. Uh, and you do it one at a time, like just replace a spring in your drive clutch or a spring in your driven clutch, whichever one you want to do, and, and see what kind of difference you made just with that one change. See if that helped you at all before you do anything. Don't try to do the whole thing at once. I, I don't like it when people try to do that all at once because clutch tuning is, you know, it, it really kind of takes somebody that knows what they're doing. But yeah, replace one part at a time if you're trying to upgrade your clutches for more torque. Mike Irwin, same here, coolest thing I've ever seen. Yep, it was the coolest thing I've ever seen too. There is no doubt about it. Tina says she's in Ohio. Yeah, I, I understand, but did it go completely dark where you're at? So, because that's only a little, that's called the path of totality. It's this little skinny line. Did, were you in the, in the uh, section where it went completely dark is what I was asking. Dennis Dean, Dennis at St. Elmo, mosquitoes came out at total at totality. All right, cool. You must be in the path too, then, Tina. You must be in the total total path, just like I was. Not everybody's, you know, they were expecting all kinds of uh, traffic and everything here. And I did hear about places in Arkansas that were overbooked and it was crazy and they were packed to the gills. But where I'm located, it, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. It wasn't near as many people as, as the hype said it was going to be. 100% totality with 10 degree drop in Cleveland yesterday. It was cool. About 97% here outside of St. Louis. Amazing how much light was still shining. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, Craig. We're watching it. We knew that we were in the to we knew that it was going to be a totality thing, and we're watching the moon through the glasses and everything as it is encroaching over the sun. And at even at 98%, it was still daylight. And we're all looking at each other, say, shouldn't it be darker than this by now? And about that time, the lights went out. So there was a big, that's what I was saying earlier, there's a big difference between 98% and 100%. So Floyd in 94 at Brown Stadium, so I'm tough to impress. <laughs> heavier drive clutch. Jeffrey says on the, on the clutch person, he likes to start with a heavier drive clutch spring first. Sir Walter says, I know you don't recommend four lead acid 12 volt batteries, but do you feel the same about, what do you mean I don't recommend four lead acid 12 volt batteries, Sir Walter? I don't, anything I've said about the four 12 volt lead acid batteries if, is, was probably this, that they don't have as much range as six eight volts. It's not that I don't recommend them, but they're just not gonna have quite as much range as six eight volts. That's probably what I said about that. It's not that I don't really recommend them. They're, they're fine if you don't need much range. You know, you're playing 18 holes of golf or whatever. You, you know, it's for that application, it would be fine. But uh, no, four, four lithiums. Yeah, that's fine. Obviously, that's 
I feel good about that. I definitely would recommend that. Dave says, time for shipping. See y'all next week. Thanks for stopping in, Dave. All right, number seven. Eric Shepard, sorry to be late. No problem, Eric. Thanks for stopping in. Number seven is from Lee. How much more height would I get with installing three or four heavy duty leaf, leaf springs on my club card DS? Well, Lee, it, it, that question, the answer to that question kind of depends. The main thing it depends on is how worn out are your leaf springs you got now? You know, how, how worn out are they? Because I've seen Club Card DS leaf springs worn to the point where not only are they just flat line, that they're actually curved in the wrong direction, that they're so worn out. So if you go from that to a four leaf heavy duty leaf spring, it might be two, three inches, you know, is what I'm saying. But just a, if your leaf springs are good and you go with heavy duty leaf springs, probably somewhere about one to two inches is, is what you, you could expect. Oh, yeah. What did we, what was that last week, Jeffrey? You talking about, yeah, you can get a, you can get a lithium for a gas golf cart. You just need to make sure that it's a lithium, uh, that is, that is for a starting application, you know, and we, I think, uh, we may have talked about that last week, the difference between a starting application and a deep cycle application. Well, as long as your lithium manufacturer, whatever one you choose to go to, as long as they know that this is going to be used in a starting application, because a gas golf cart would be considered a starting application, because as soon as it cranks up, it's going to just like a car, just like an automobile. That would be a starting application. So, yeah, just tell. I know Dakota makes uh, lithiums that, that are for uh, starting applications also. Don't forget to give our boy the thumbs up. Thank you, Craig. Oh, cranking amps versus amp hours. Use my finger. <laughs> Let's see, where are we at? Number eight. This is from Carl. I have a 2001 club car. My charger keeps tripping about 10 to 15 minutes into the charge cycle. I believe it's the OBC. Before I buy an expensive part that I cannot return, I'd like to confirm that. I'm not overlooking another possible, possible explanation. Can you please help? Okay, I can tell you this, Carl. It's very, very unlikely that that's your OBC. I would say that your the most likely candidates are either going to be your batteries are really really dead in conjunction with a weak circuit breaker on your charger because uh so you may have to end up charging that car up in stages once you get it 100% charged it might not pop as often or it might not pop as easily. You may have to replace that circuit breaker because it it seems to be in my experience that the more often they pop the weaker they get. They, they get weaker and weaker and then they pop more often. It just, it's just a, a compounding cycle on it. So, but it's usually caused by trying to charge a really, really weak battery pack because the charger has to work really hard to do that. So you might want to, you might want to try a fan on the charger, blowing through the charger, a squirrel cage fan, if you know what I'm talking about. They move a lot of air, like put one right beside the charger, blowing through it, and that'll keep that circuit breaker a little cool and get all that heat out of there. That may help you. And if you, like I said, you may have to charge that card in stages, like charge it one time for till it pops and then go drive it a little bit, try to do it again. Once it gets up to a fully charged state, it will probably be a lot easier on the charger.
just go. Jason Brown. What's going on, Jason Brown, on YouTube? If I want to upgrade my cart to AC and convert it from series to PDS, would I purchase a PDS controller or a series? I understand I'll need new throttle parts. 2002. Would I purchase, if I want to upgrade my cart to AC, okay, well, first of all, if you're going to want to upgrade your cart to AC, you're getting a new controller. You have to get a new controller. Okay, you're getting an AC controller. Uh, so if that's the case, Jason, the Navita systems, they start, they're all designed for 48 volt TXTs. So yeah, you have to get a wiring harness and everything for 48 volt TXT, which is a PDS also. And then you get the Navita system. And there's, oh, by the way, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that show step by step, there's step by step videos on YouTube that do exactly what it is you're doing. What you're trying to do is you're trying to go from a 2002 series wound cart to install the Navitas AC system. There are step by step videos on YouTube that show you exactly what you need to buy and exactly how to do it. Hickory, North Carolina, raining here. Thank you, Jason. James Lancey. Lancey. I'm in the middle of rebuilding an FE290. It was burning oil when I took it apart. The cylinder wall is good in specs. Question, do I really need to hone the cylinder wall or can I just put a new piston in it? Now, I think that there was going to be lots of opinions on this. Jeffrey might even be able to give you an opinion on this, but I say that you hone the cylinder wall. What do you say, Jeffrey? Easy mic to you, hone it. Craig says hone it for sure. That's what I've always been told, that you hone it. And the, the reason the reason I was told that is because of the of uh, what's it called? Uh, is you might not be able to tell by looking at it, but that cylinder not no longer goes up and down. It has an egg shape to it because of the pressure the, the, the crankshaft puts on it. So you hone it and you take out a little bit of that egg shape. I got everybody saying hone it over here on YouTube there, uh, James Lancey. Number nine. Jeffrey says you can hone it as long as the ring gear is still within tolerance. Number nine is from Denver. I have a 2012 Precedent Club car, 48 volt, six, eight volt batteries. It has a lift installed with 22 inch wheels. Do I need different battery cables since putting on a lift and large, do I need different battery cables since putting on a lift and larger wheels? I, this is what I'd say about that. I would say not necessarily. I don't think you necessarily have to, to, to go with different size battery cables. If you have, uh, if you're not getting any heat, like go drive your car around, drive it hard, you know, drive it around like a, put it through its paces and then stop and then grab your cables and fill your cables. If you're not developing any heat and any, any excessive heat in any of your cables or any of your cable ends or connections, then there's no reason that you need to go to cables because you're not missing anything. The only reason that you would need to change is if you were missing some amps and if you were missing some amps, it would develop heat in a bottleneck somewhere. So if your cables aren't a bottleneck, then they're not going to get a heat. They're not going to heat up and there's no reason to change. But some people like to change just because they, they want to, you know, feel, you know, overkill. Overkill is, I'm, I'm a big fan of overkill myself, but it's not necessary is all I'm saying if you're not developing heat in your cables.
All right, number 10. Ring gap, no major scars or ring lip up top. He's talking about the cylinder. Jeffrey's still talking about the cylinder there when you can hone it. Yeah, he said everything was in spec on, the, uh, on Facebook. Let me see if he commented on that. James Lancey says, thank you. Uh, Harry Fike says honing it will make new rings break in better. Yeah, everybody's saying hone it, James. I got people on Facebook saying hone it. And everybody on uh, YouTube is saying hone it. No lip. He's got, he doesn't have any lip, so that's good. Where was I at? Number nine? No, I'm on number 10. This is the last scheduled question. This is from Phil. I plan on buying the eight Trojan T105 RV batteries from you guys and wanted to know what battery cable you recommend. You're gonna be running eight T105, so that's, that's 48 volts. That's a big 48 volt battery when you run six of T105s in series. That is a huge 48 volt battery. What battery uh, cables would you recommend? Well, you're talking about an RV application, probably not even, depending on what you're gonna be running, probably not even put as much of a pull as a golf cart would, but if you wanna be sure, go with six gauge or four gauge. That would be the same size cable that, mo that most golf carts are running. Uh, and that way, if you ever did pull that much juice, you know six or four gauge is gonna be fine. Uh, Four is going to be bigger than six. The, the lower the number, the, the bigger the cable is. But regular stock golf cart cables are six gauge. And, you know, for T105s, T875s, all those setups. So those, those can handle a lot of amp draw. So a lot. Six gauge and four gauge can. So that's what I would recommend. Six or four would be fine. And then obviously, like I said earlier, obviously check for heat after you're running your whatever you're running off of that, your refrigerator, your air conditioner, I guess. I mean, if for a battery pack that size, you must be talking about running air conditioner and everything, I would think. Okay. If you'd like to buy a hat from Golf Cart Garage, I practice my MMA moves on the cat. Have a good day. <laughs> From Craig. I practice those on my dog occasionally until he bites me and then I then I stop. That's matches over then. Okay. If you'd like to purchase a golf cart garage hat, you can. There's some hot links in the description that take you right to them. There they are. Bam, 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 bam. We do give hats away here on, uh, on the show occasionally. Uh, if my wife was watching, but I know she's not because she's busy, then I would ask her if we could announce it, but can't announce it until uh, I find out for sure if she can help me or not. So I'm not going to announce it for next episode, but it could be a surprise. I don't know. We'll see because I think it's about time. But I'm not saying it for sure that next time we'll give away another bag of swag. I'll have to check the dates too. Okay. We, are, we do not have a coupon. I do not have an updated coupon. The coupon got expired or it went expired and uh, we did not have time to get another one. So they're working on that. Almost missed the show. D-Max, what's going on D-Max? Easy mic to you. I practiced that on my wife once. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Yeah. James Lancey is uh, asking, wait a minute, let me get this guy up here. Larry McFarlane, what's going on Larry on Facebook? I have a 2002 Easy Go Kart upgraded to a 36 volt lithium battery, but my question is about how long an electric motor should last. Well, 
I can tell you this, Larry, they will last a very, very long time. They will last longer than you, than you will last, that's for sure. It's very rare that there's been something wrong with an electric golf cart motor in my experience, even with some that are really old. Now, I have had to put brushes in, in electric golf cart motors before, but it's amazing to me that even some of the real old ones, in fact, I feel that some of the really old ones are actually built and made better than some of the newer ones today. So they last a really long time. So it's, it's almost like a, a, don't even worry about that as being an issue is what I'm saying. You know, unless you end up with a problem with the cart and you, and you need to isolate the motor and then you, then you can look up the, isol, the motor isolation test and make sure that it still spins and whatever. But uh, they last a very long time. It's very difficult to even speculate on how many hours that, that they can last. Uh, Larry uh, is asking guys, he's asking what hone do you recommend? What about that, uh, Jeffrey? You got a particular hone that you would recommend for that, for that, the, the cylinder honing question that we were talking about? Okay, I already did number 10. All right, we're going to see some Eclipse pictures because let's see. I don't have any golf cart pictures, but I do have my pictures from the Eclipse. Y'all ready for this? I'm, like I said, you've probably already seen it. Everybody looks the same. So here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> what did I do? All right. Bam. This is a... Uh, Larry, uh, Jeffrey says cross hone 160 is what he says for a hone. Cross hone 160s. This is uh, when it first started, you know, and the, you know, the moon's coming across, going that way. I don't know, did I ever ask, can y'all see my cursor when, I'm, when I've got the pictures up there? Can you see my cursor on your screen? I think I asked that one time, but I can't remember uh, what the answer was. Anyway, well, this is the picture on the right is where it was just starting, you know, and, and it, this, that moon went all the way to the edge. Okay, you can't see my cursor. Okay, well, I'll, I'll quit moving my cursor then because I'm not doing any good. So the picture on the right, you know, is when it started. And uh, it went to almost to the point where there was almost no light, just a sliver of light, and it was still daylight outside. But then when it went to the picture on the left, the total totality, that's when the lights went out. I mean, that's when everything went out. This picture on the right, I took with my smartphone with one of those little filters that you get with the glasses that you put over the, your smartphone lenses, and then you can look directly at the sun and take, the, take a photo. But the picture on the left, the, total, the totality picture, that's no filter at all. I was able to put my phone straight up. That's straight up smartphone, no filter, nothing. That's what that picture was from. It was the craziest thing ever. But when it was total totality, it was dark. Jeff, uh, William says, uh, now that they're back in the villages, he can send me some more cart pitch. All right, cool, William, yeah. Gene, what's going on, Gene? Eric Shepard, Jeffrey Grit, them as high, finer as you, as you can get. Let me see if he's still over there. No cursor, all right, got you. Cross hone 160, okay. Did you get that, Larry, over here? I mean, James Lancy, not Larry. James Lancy, did you get what they said over there? Cross hone 160 is what, they, is what the guys are recommending over there on, uh, on YouTube. All right. I'll leave that Eclipse picture up there while I can answer William Flowers. I have a 92 Easy Go Marathon that I wrecked. It still runs, but the frame is warped. Can you put the running gear in a 90-ish club car frame? Most Easy Go frames are worse rusted than the ones I have. I, you know, it's funny you ask that, William, because in the, in the racing world, I know that people have done the opposite because the running gear on a club car, there were certain axles and running gear on a club car that were more beefy and they would put those in an easy go frame. 
because an easy go frame is made of steel and doesn't, doesn't bend as easy as a club car frame in a, in a rack or something like that. But you're trying to do the opposite. So uh, yes, there is, there is nothing that is, that is impossible. So yeah, that wouldn't be that big a deal if you have some fabricating ability. You're going to have to have some fabricating ability and maybe some welding ability. But yeah, all you do, all you needed to do would be take that axle, put it into the frame, and you could see where you needed to mount the, you know, everything. So it is possible. Uh, but you're going to have to figure out how to weld that steel to aluminum, or you're going to end up having to make brackets that bolt. It's, it's going to be a project. Definitely would be a project, William, but it's not impossible. Kirk says it looks like an eyeball. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it was a. Oh, look at there. It was the craziest thing I've, I've ever seen. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got to see it in my lifetime because uh, I doubt I'll ever get to see that again. But uh, that was, that was some weird stuff. Okay, don't forget, I said we didn't have a coupon. We didn't get the coupon updated in time. But uh, we still have that, if you buy $2,099 worth of anything from Golf Cart Garage, you get a $100 Amazon gift card. So that we still got that going on. Also, if you were thinking about going lithium, we, uh, Ecos are still 10% off across the board. No coupon or anything necessary. The Eco battery line of lithium batteries at golfcartgarage.com is 10% off across the board. So the price is already factored in there. So if you're thinking of going lithium, uh, that you know, might be something you want to look into. All right. Jorge Carr, the new lithium battery is doing great in my limo car. 48 volts, 60 amp hour, getting 16 miles. Jorge Carr. All right, cool. Yeah, 60 amp, that's not, a, that's not even a big one. That's one of the smaller ones. So, so you're getting 16 miles. Is that right, Jorge? Is that, am I saying that right? Is that Jorge? I'm just... Uh, Bob Whitfong, 2012 TXT, rear end is leaking gear oil. Is there a gasket that is leaking, or is it just gasket sealer between the cover plate and the main housing? On mine, Bob, my TXT, there's no gasket. It's just sealer. It's just sealer doing it. But I have seen I have seen gaskets available in the aftermarket world. So it just depends. It's going to be uh, just take it off and see. And if it's got a gasket, you know, that might be easier. Some people, but apparently that surface is is smooth enough that if you could just use sealer, because I've I've taken many of those off where there was no gasket and it was just sealer, you know, that was causing it to leak. Mine leaks right now, so I don't I don't know if I've ever had I don't know if I've ever had the uh, cover off of that one or not. But I've got to do it to f figure out if the same thing. Okay, we did. Oh, if you want like to contact us at Golf Cart Garage, you are welcome to if you have suggestions or anything. Here's the uh, email address and the phone number, support at golfcartgarage.com. If you need to ask us a question, you need to give us a, a suggestion on anything that we should be doing differently or any products that you would like to see us carry that we don't carry or any additional products that you'd like to see us carry. Okay, and the Eclipse pictures, we saw that already. Looks like that's going to be about it, guys. I think that's going to be it. Let's see on Facebook here. Yep, I got to Bob. Okay. Helpless says, have a wonderful week all. I'm hoping to get back to twice a week soon. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Tim, Dave, and Iman. Avi is very helpful. Yes, they are. everybody uh, that, is, that works here is uh, pretty good. Pretty good at their job. So thank you all for our support. Thank you for showing up every episode. Thank you for participating. I think I, I like it now. I really like it how there's lots of people in the room with lots of different experience. I can ask 
on the room for certain things that I may not have exactly what the customer needs, like the home, you know, the type of home that would be recommended. So thank you, Jeffrey, on that information. Thank you, everyone else that, that helped out with that. That's how I wanted it to be from the start of this. And it's definitely gotten to that point, and that makes it a lot easier for me. All right, guys, I will see everybody next week. I will see you on Tuesday, which will be the... What is it? 16th. Tuesday the 16th. All right. The garage is now closed. Thank you, everybody, for coming.